crab sticks, fish cakes, tokpoki, sesame seeds, sesame oil, melon. Ah. Oh, titas and titas. That's up. So, um, reading my grocery list, Tita Carla, Tita Carla asked me to buy some stuff at the Korean grocery. So, I thought might as well do a video on some of the stuff that you should buy when you're at the Korean grocery. Because uh, Korean food is one of the healthiest cuisines on earth. Okay? Kimchi was actually named a few years back as the healthiest food on earth. So, we're gonna buy some stuff and then later on we're gonna explain to you why they're healthy or things you should buy. So, Annyeong. Alright, so we're here. Oh no, this is the wrong aisle. We're on the snacks. <laughs> male, 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 male. Wow, guys, anchovies. That's like the, one of the healthiest fish ever. Anchovies. Yung mga dilis, yung maliit. Yeah, and super, super, super sustanta And then they have an assortment of uh, different kinds of kimchi here. Yeah, have like kelp. And, and I guarantee the probiotics. So later, uh, explain ko sa inyo kung bakit uh, healthy yun and ano yung mga benefits na makuha mo sa kanya. Yun, yun tayo. So, ito na yung mga, these are uh, gochujang, samjang, denjang. So, these are like the pastes that they use. A lot of these are used, are made using uh, spicy peppers or even fermented soybeans. So, a lot of them are very good for you. Of course, you want your dried seaweeds, your dried kelp. So, nakalimutan ko yung listahan ni Carla. So, kailangan natin i-double check. Dahil pag hindi natin nabili, baka outside the kulambu tayo patulugin. So, yung ibang bibiling ko, hindi naman sila necessary healthy. necessarily healthy sa katawan. Pero healthy sila sa relationship. Kasi pag hindi mo siya binili, magiging unhealthy yung relationship niya mag-asawa. Okay. So ito is actually also ano, healthy as a snack yung seaweed. It does have a lot of health benefits. Iodine, magnesium. So my wife likes her spicy stuff. Okay, shoot this one. So, these two. I'm getting these two para safe tayo. Para hindi ako sigurado kung alin yung gusto niya eh. Di, di natin pareho. Okay. <laughs> so guys, you don't, you know, um, you know, it's okay to enjoy a lot of different kinds of foods, especially healthy foods, because it's not that hard to make it. Uh, you just need a couple of ingredients, and then you don't need that much time. So if there's anything that we learned during the quarantine, during the lockdown, it's that it's it's actually fairly easy to make healthy foods. Before this, di kami nagluluto sa bahay masado, <laughs> bihira, bihirang bihira. Pero ngayon, since nag quarantine, natutu talaga kami and. May ilig sa kay drama yung asawa ko so na inspire siya magluto ng maraming Korean food actually. What's up titas and titas? Jared and Conde here. And today's video is something very special. We are going to talk about five healthy foods you can find at the Korean grocery. Hello. All of you titas and titas who watched Crash Landing on You to Itaewon class and then now we're a lot of people are watching niyan. It's Okay, you get what I mean. So, we talk about health, fitness, healthy food, healthy lifestyles for all you titas and titas. My name is Jerdan Conde, and I am a 15-year veteran of the fitness industry. I focus on health and fitness and a balanced lifestyle. Please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Pakisira yung like button na yan, okay? Gulpihin yung like button na yan. Or, kung pwede lang. Okay. We went to a Korean grocery and now I'm gonna show you what we got and the healthy foods we got and the hair health benefits. Okay, so first one, of course, no Korean grocery haul, no Korean food would be complete without kimchi. Most important health benefit of kimchi is its probiotic content. Kimchi is typically a fermented vegetable, usually cabbage, sometimes radish. So it's very, very high in fiber. That fiber will help you control or lower your total cholesterol. Second, probiotics. Probiotics are the good bacteria in your gut. These good bacteria are very, very important because they are the ones that help your body fight off diseases coming from 
bad bacteria. Instead of killing off bad bacteria with things like uh, alcohol or whatever, another beneficial way to do it is to increase the number of good bacteria you have. Because it's fermented, that fermentation creates cultures that uh, increase the number of good bacteria. And then, since it's made of cabbage, cabbage is a prebiotic. A probiotic is good bacteria. A prebiotic is the food of the good bacteria. Normally, this comes from very fibrous vegetables that are either raw or fermented. Okay, normally cooking destroys a little bit of these prebiotic fibers. It protects you against certain cancers and heart disease. That's another benefit you get from eating a lot of kimchi. It also reduces inflammation. So inflammation in and of itself is not a bad thing. But chronic inflammation or a constant state of being inflamed is what's bad for you. And this has been linked to the development of chronic degenerative diseases like heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, and others. So it's very important to basically control inflammation and not be in a chronically elevated state. Another thing, it has, it has anti-aging benefits. It will slow down the aging process. Another thing, it's very rich in vitamin K2. It's very important in calcium absorption and of course, also very, very important in strong bones and teeth. Okay, so if you want healthy bones and teeth, make sure you take your vitamin K2. So that is our very, very first one. Now another one of note, a bonus for, uh, this is something that most women deal with. Kimchi also helps out and prevents yeast infections. A yeast infection is basically bad bacteria going out of whack for you ladies down there. So kimchi helps control those yeast infections or candida basically. Right. Another thing about kimchi, since it's very high in fiber, it's spicy, uh, it aids in weight loss. More on that later, but for now, those are the health benefits of kimchi. The second item that is really, really healthy that you can find at a Korean grocery is none other than seaweed. This is the first type of seaweed we have. This is actually um, dried kelp. You can add this to soups, you can add this to stew. Actually, the Koreans consume um, a soup. I think it's called miyokkuk. Please correct me if there are again Koreans watching this video. Please let me know if I said that right. Miyokkuk, right? So it's seaweed soup that they serve you on your birthday. Okay, birthday soup filled with this one. So it's dried kelp. You can put it in your soup. Uh, it'll get behind, uh, sorry, it'll get bigger, thicker like a picture there. And then this one is your nori for all of you sushi bake lovers. So they're, these are both uh, two kinds of seaweed. So the first benefit of a lot of seaweed is that it contains a lot of iodine and tyrosine which support thyroid function. Basically your thyroid gland produces hormones that are involved with energy production, energy reprodu reproduction, they control growth as well, and of course the repair of damaged cells in your body. Like I said, this is wakame also, it's also called as wakame, dried kelp. And this is what you have, uh, nori. Okay, nori. Of all of them, this has the lowest, the lowest uh, iodine, okay? And then this has the higher one. The other one is called kombu. We don't have it here. Uh, it's, it's more, I think, a Japanese type of seaweed. Per gram of uh, this gives you about 93% of your daily requirement. Okay, wow. That's amazing, right? So, one, one teaspoon of this, one teaspoon of your uh, kelp, can actually give you about 59 times the recommended daily allowance. You don't want to have way too much, so it's best to have this maybe uh, in not super high amounts, okay? Number two, seaweed contains a lot of vitamins and minerals. So like I said earlier, it has iodine, but other vitamins that are found in seaweed are vitamin B12, which is not so common in plant foods, but seaweed has a fairly high amount of vitamin B12. This can help your body produce or use energy more efficiently. It also has a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. If you guys are uh, familiar with the superfoods spirulina and chlorella, they are found in seaweeds. So spirulina and chlorella, a natural source of those, is seaweeds. Now again, this is my preferred choice. This is my favorite type, dried kelp, as compared to this one, because usually this one is salted. I think it's not as thick. It's not as thick as this one, so you can probably get more bang for your buck with this one. 
It has a lot of antioxidants as well. One of the notable antioxidants is an antioxidant called fucoxanthin. All right, fucoxanthin is a carotenoid antioxidant that protects your cell membrane much, much better than vitamin A. Vitamin A is an antioxidant as well, but it has been shown that fucoxanthin protects your cell membranes better than vitamin A. Now, it doesn't absorb so easily. So the best way to absorb fucoxanthin in your seaweeds is to actually consume it with some fat sources. A good source of fat that you could consume it with is if you add meat to to your stews or soups that have this meat, uh, maybe some fat in from the meat that would transfer to the broth. That's also very uh, effective. Next benefit, number three, it's very, very high in fiber. And remember we talked about gut health earlier, about probiotics. Seaweed is a prebiotic. Like I mentioned with kimchi, it is the, fo the food of the good bacteria. In some cases, you cannot actually supplement with probiotics. There are some type of probiotics that you cannot supplement with. So the best way to get this good bacteria into your body is to provide it with its food. So if you provide it with its food in your, in your stomach, Basically, the good bacteria will come because they have food. So that's like creating an ecosystem for that good bacteria. And this does it. Now, uh, this is very rich in sulfated polysaccharides. It's been shown to increase the number of your good gut bacteria. Now, this is very important because as human beings, it ha new research, okay? This is new research has found that there are more bacteria, bacteria in our body than human cells. So in essence, we're actually more bacterial than we are human. And lately, we've been trying to kill off a lot of that bacteria. Remember, that antibacterial stuff kills not only the bad bacteria, but it also kills the good bacteria. So we have to balance that out. So since you, most of us do sanitize and wash our hands regularly, we have to balance that out by using or eating foods that contain a lot of these good bacteria to properly rebalance our gut bacteria. The sulfated polysaccharides also are known to produce short-chain fatty acids. The short-chain fa fatty acids provide uh, a better layer for your gut lining. So it actually helps protect your gut lining and helps protect you from leaky gut, which has been linked to a lot of uh, other diseases. Since it's rich in fiber, it will help you delay hunger and could possibly aid in weight reduction. So para sa mga matatakaw, eat a lot of fiber and you're probably not gonna be able to eat so much of the other bad stuff. That's one of the ways. Plus, it helps pass through your system and get rid of the toxins through your poop. Okay. It also is linked to the reduction of your heart disease risk. So that's another reason that you might want to consume more seaweeds. It also helps reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes and it helps you with blood sugar control. Uh, they, there is actually a study in Japan where they were given seaweeds and the... The ones that were given the most uh, seaweeds, they were the ones who actually had the best improvements in their insulin sensitivity. From a place of being insulin resistant, they became insulin sensitive. And that's very good for you for blood sugar control. The third thing that has a lot of health benefits is none other than gochujang. Okay, gochujang. I hope I said that right. If there are any Koreans watching this, please help, help me or correct me if I said anything wrong. Okay. Now, if you've made it this far, please don't forget to hit the like button, yan, smash it, subscribe. So, gochujang. Uh, if you guys eat bibimbap, that, the one with the rice, and then there's a lot of vegetables, and then sometimes beef, sometimes chicken, in a, in a pot, in a stone pot, and then with that red spicy paste, this is it. This is gochujang. Benefits of gochujang are number one. It is very good for fat burning or the breakdown of fat. It's very effective for fat loss. It works to do that through three mechanisms. The first one, it breaks down fat and it prevents the formation of fat cells. So they did a study on rats where they gave them spicy red peppers, which is the main ingredient of gochujang. And there was a reduction in the formation of fat cells and there was an increase in the breakdown of existing fat. The second way it works is by increasing your metabolism or your metabolic rate. Remember, your metabolism is responsible for burning off energy, burning off calories. It increases the rate at which you burn calories. And then the third, 
is by decreasing blood sugar or controlling blood sugar again just like seaweed and also kimchi they have that effect in a way i think korean cuisine is very very healthy there's a compound in red peppers called capsaicin capsaicin is responsible for all those three actions plus capsaicin is also an antioxidant it fights chronic inflammation as well and the consumption of it in moderate amounts has been shown to help prevent heart disease make sure to get your goju jam eat your bibimbap in a stone pot be, be very generous with your gochu jam. Now, there are different types of this. It can be spicy or like really, really, really spicy to, you know, not super, super spicy. Now, I don't read, I cannot read Korean, but um, so far I have this and sometimes medyo napapa ihip ako pag nagluluto yung asawa ko ng Korean food. Okay, so that's gochu jam. Okay, the next one, the next health food, healthy food that you can buy at a Korean grocery is this one. Samjam. So samjam is a sauce. Sa lahat sa inyo na mahilig kumain ng samgyupsal. Okay. So this is the one that you put inside the leaf, the lettuce leaf, and then you wrap your uh, yung meat, de ba? The grilled meat, and then you put this there with it, and then maybe some garlic, some onions. I think that's the stuff they usually do that with, or they usually eat it with. Samjam is made by adding kochujang, which we discussed re uh, previously, and denjang. Now denjang is the actual healthy component in the samjam. So denjang is basically a fermented soybean paste. Soybeans have gotten a lot of negative uh, negative flack in recent uh, years. There are a lot of anti-nutrients in soybeans. There are a lot of undesirable effects by the consumption of soybeans, the high consumption of soybeans. But the fermentation seems to be able to fight some of these bad side effects. Plus, a lot of the soybeans that are consumed and the studies are done are made on genetically modified soybeans that are subsidized by farming. Uh, farming or agriculture uh, laws, most especially in the US. But if you get your uh, fermented soybeans from Asia, most of those are non-GMO. Okay, especially in Korea, I think they're they're not they're not very uh, big on genetically modified foods out there. Uh, samjang, the effects of samjang they found are it's very it has anti-obesity, anti-diabetic, anti-cancer, and anti-inflammatory activities. Now, one of the most recent studies that they did on this in involved um, an animal study of feeding them denjang. Now, what they did was they tried to find out, since uh, denjang actually has a lot of salt in it, so they tried to find out if a high salt diet actually raised blood pressure. What they found is that by, okay, I'm not saying consume a lot of salt, okay, but by feeding the animal study, uh, the, the animals involved in the study, denjang, it actually lowered their blood pressure. The conclusion was that this type of uh, salty food does not increase your risk for blood pressure. In fact, quite the opposite. It lowers your blood pressure. So that's one of the benefits of the samjang. The next one that we're gonna discuss, guys, is there's a two-in-one here. So this is um, cold-pressed sesame oil. And these are roasted sesame seeds. It's very important that you get the cold-pressed version one of the sesame oil. Benefits of sesame oil are, number one, it's very high in antioxidants. Antioxidant called sesamol and sesaminol. Okay, try to say that five times really fast if you can. Sesamol and sesaminol. Okay, I can't even say it once. Slow. Alright, so these two antioxidants have very powerful effects on your health. They reduce the damage caused by free radicals and they're found exclusively in sesame oil and sesame seeds. So it protects against heart cell damage. So it's very good for your heart. Sesame oil also has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. Now, as I said earlier, it's very important to control inflammation because chronically elevated levels of inflammation can lead to chronic degenerative diseases such as heart disease, cancers, uh, Alzheimer's, diabetes. Sesame oil and sesame seeds are also helpful in blood sugar control, so it's very beneficial for diabetics. They did a study on 46 adults with type 2 diabetes, and they fed them sesame oil for 90 days. And after 90 days, fasting blood sugar was significantly reduced. A marker also for blood sugar control called hemoglobin A1C or HbA1c. 
So these markers were improved by 90 days of sesame oil consumption. Here's another very, very important thing that sesame oil or sesame seeds help with. So it's arthritis. Some of you titos and titas might have your own titos and titas who have arthritis. There was a study done and on consumption of sesame oil and it improved uh, knee pain more specifically. I occasionally get bouts of knee pain from heavy training in the past when I, I used to compete in functional fitness and CrossFit competitions from that heavy load, not really osteoarthritis, but I noticed that when I do consume some of these healthy fats, a lot more of these healthy fats, that the knee pain does subside. You may want to consume these if you're experiencing some pain in your joints that are possibly caused by arthritis. Some of the benefits of sesame oil have been shown with a topical application. So you actually apply it to your skin. So one, it helps wounds and burns heal faster. Uh, in previous wars, they've used this to help treat soldiers' wounds and burns. And then another thing is that it protects your skin from ultraviolet ray damage. Now, they compared it to coconut oil and other oil. It was shown that sesame oil had a higher rate of blocking UV rays, 30%, as compared to coconut oil's 20%. So in that sense, it's superior as sunscreen, all right? More, more studies are needed for that, so you might not want to actually like drizzle yourself with sesame oil, okay, when, when you go out in the sun, but it does show some promise in that. Next, sesame seeds have been shown to aid hormone balance during menopause. So for some of you slightly older titas who are already going through menopause, this might help you guys with your hormone balance because it is rich in phytoestrogens, plant compounds that are similar to the hormone estrogen. As far as I understand, I'm not a woman, so probably need a little bit more background here, but it does decrease the risk of certain diseases such as breast cancer. And some studies have been shown to help with that. You can add this to dips, sauces, you can top it on top of your vegetables or your salads. You can even put it on top of yogurt or maybe even add it to a smoothie if that's your thing. And finally, the last food on this list is anchovies. So I don't know if you can see that, but these are anchovies. These are tiny little fish. Very hard for me to find this in normal supermarkets, but as you can see, in some Korean groceries, they have this. I actually bought this in a Korean grocery. And if you look closely, the anchovies have sesame seeds on top of them. So I bought them this way. So proof that the Korean, that a lot of Korean food is very, very healthy. Now, anchovies, for their size, for their small size, these are very, very high in omega-3 fatty acids. And as we know, omega-3 fatty acids are extremely, extremely beneficial for your heart health, for your brain as well. For pregnant women, this is very important because omega-3 fatty acids are responsible in large part in the development of your unborn baby's brain development. Now, the thing about consuming a lot of fish though, wild-caught fish, especially like a swordfish or mackerel, is that they're somewhat high in mercury. Now, the good thing about anchovies is that it's very, very, very low in mercury. So there's a simple rule of thumb with that. Normally, the smaller the fish, the less mercury contamination. So you have big fishes like tuna, and like I said, swordfish, and for, I hope you guys don't consume shark meat, but yeah, these, they're very, very high in mercury poisoning. Now, little, little fish like these are somewhat lower in uh, mercury contamination. And then another thing is anchovies are a very, very good source of protein. They're very, very high in protein. Now, protein helps build your muscles, and another benefit of a high-protein diet is that they help to satisfy you more or satiate you more. Basically, they make you feel fuller for longer. One way they work is by slashing a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin is actually the hormone that is responsible for hunger. So anchovies will also help with that. And then another thing is it has been shown to support strong bones. It's rich in calcium and vitamin K2. So as we mentioned earlier, you can also get vitamin K2 from fermented foods and seaweed. So there. So it helps you prom uh, helps weight loss, helps your heart, helps you build muscle, low in mercury. And another good thing about anchovies is this is a wild caught fish. It's one of the most sustainable types of fish. It's not farmed. Some of the fish that we consume, especially here in the Philippines, like tilapia, is farmed. And that's not a good thing. 
The bad side of farmed fish, aside from the fact that they're very, very unnatural, the reason for that is they're being fed stuff that's not normally found in the sea. So fish normally eat smaller fish, but a lot of these farmed fishes like tilapia are given feeds, and that's not a natural part of their diet, and that's, that alters the nutritional content of the fish. What happens is that their uh, ratios of omega-3 fatty acids to omega-6 fatty acids become unreasonably disproportionate. So it increases the omega-6 fatty acids and lowers the omega-3 fatty acid content of the fish. That's why you shouldn't consume much of these farmed fish like tilapia. But anchovies, it's wild, very very high in omega-3s, high in protein, so it's good for you. So whenever you're out at a Korean restaurant, and they serve you this on the side with the appetizers like kimchi and um, sometimes there's other stuff like anchovies there's uh, different types of kimchi radishes sometimes they have those sweet potatoes make sure you always eat the kimchi and the anchovies because those are the best for you best for your health i always ask for extra extra of those whenever i'm out eating at a korean restaurant now the korean diet has actually been named to be the healthiest diet on earth some years back up there in contention with the Mediterranean diet as far as how healthy an actual diet for a whole country or a whole region of this earth is. I hope you liked this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that information helped you out. And again, I'm Jaden Conde. Please wait for our other videos. Thank you very much for watching our videos. I'll see you next time.